All right, guys, and welcome back. Right, in today's episode, I want to go through the wiring loom for this C20LET engine and show you guys exactly what you need to do before you fit it to your car. But before I do that, I want to stick the inlet manifold back on first. So we're going to start off by fitting a brand new inlet gasket. And then the inlet manifold can carefully slot on. You just need to make sure this water pipe is fitted correctly. And away we go. And now I'm going to fit the M8 nuts and washers. Now normally there'd be an earth strap between here and here because the alternator is normally rubber mounted. However, this one shouldn't because it's got solid aluminium bushes in the bottom, which should mean I don't need an earth. Beautiful. So before I do anything to the loom, I just wanted to put a couple of hoses on just to make sure everything fits okay. And I've noticed these JS Performance hoses are actually, some of them are too long. So the, the idle control valve hoses are both too long. They need to be, that, that's how long it needs to be. So I need to cut that much off, which is a huge amount. Uh, not a problem, right? I just wanted to point that out. So I'm going to cut that with a Stanley blade. That can slot on there nicely. And away we go. Brand new Stanley blade. Hot knife through butter. That's better. So here we go. Brand new header tank here. This hose on the end of the plastic pipe goes to the header tank. The next one goes to the left hand side of the heater matrix. The right hand side of the heater matrix goes back to the head. This bleeder, which kind of comes from the top of the inlet manifold to the throttle body, out of the throttle body here, connects up to this, which goes to the top of the rad, which again is like a bleeder. Um, it comes with a T piece, like so, that goes on there. And that goes into the main hose, which goes here, just like that, basically. Really easy. Right, I'm going to take all these off. Um, now I've had a trial of it, and we're going to start doing some wiring. So this is the engine loom from a Calibra Turbo C20 Let. Now, as you can imagine, these looms are 30 years old now. So I'd never advise you just to simply put it on and expect it to work, because it's probably not going to. Now, straight away, I'm not looking at this yet. But that has been repaired. So first thing I do with these is I take all the tape off, all the repaired tape, shall I say, stuff like that, which is clearly a, a bad repair, and I'll inspect it. Now, it might need soldering back up. It might need all sorts, but we'll just have a look and see what's wrong with it. So there we go. Straight away, we can see a terrible repair. Someone's used some crimps here, and it's not very good. That goes to the coolant temperature sensor. If that gets a fault, the vehicle's going to run rich. Could damage the engine. So, straight away, found a problem. Another thing I do is I use a wiring diagram to do a continuity test, essentially. So, that's your airflow meter plug, I believe. Now, obviously, these are pinned. That's pinned one to six. You know which colour's which. You can go back to the ECU, find that wire in here. And I could do a continuity test. So I could basically check the resistance of the wire and make sure it's still attached. If it's open circuit, you know there's a break, or if it's high resistance, again, you know there's a break or some corrosion in there. So I always tend to do that. It doesn't take that long and it's actually quite easy to do. So, like I say, coolant temperature wiring needs repairing straight off. Other than that, from a quick glance, these engine earths are being repaired. Uh, not that well. They're okay, but I'll do them again. I believe that's the knock, knock sensor loom. And as you can probably see there, it's broken off. One wire is detached. So again, not good. That needs repairing. Another earth being repaired. Not very well. Now, to get this running in the car, it's actually quite straightforward. So if you want to 
put this engine in anything, for example. Really easy. So, I'm going to quickly run through how you do it. So, this wire here is the battery positive. Red, that connects to the battery. Yep. Nice and easy. That wire there, which is black, plugs in near the gearbox area. That is an ignition positive. So that should be positive when the ignition's on. Uh, you obviously earth it, which earths through these points here. And that, I believe, should get it going. Oh, yeah, sorry. Fuel pump as well. Fuel pumps, this one near the fuel pump relay, blue and red. So you literally connect that to your fuel pump, one wire, and then you earth the fuel pump on the body of the vehicle. And that will get it going. And then stuff like your gauges, this green plug here, that green wire is for your rev counter. That soft blue wire is for your temperature gauge. And the brown and white and brown and yellow are for your diagnostic light and diagnostic earthing to make your fault codes come up, basically. And I think from memory, that is it. This is, I mean, I haven't done this for a few years now, but I am sure that is it. So the broken knock sensor plug, as you can see, a wire snapped. Now on the let, they're slightly different to an XE. In XE, this loom is removable, like so. On the let, they're not. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the XE loom, because I've got a spare one here, and then solder it onto this, heat shrink it, and make it look nice again. So I'm going to start off by just cutting some of this insulation back, carefully with a, a new Stanley blade. Now this stuff goes really hard. really brittle and I'm going to do the same with the XE loom just really carefully I don't want to damage it right now I can chop this off and then it's just a case of reattaching the wiring and the heat shrinking the joints now I use solder not everyone likes this but I'm a qualified auto electrician and this is the way I was trained. Personally, if it's done properly, it shouldn't give you any issues. What I tend to do is slide the heat shrink over the wiring first, then wrap wires together before soldering. And then once the solder's cooled, I slide the heat shrink over the joint and use a blowtorch to shrink it down. It makes a nice OEM water resistant factory finish. Finally, I wrap the rest of the loom in cloth insulation tape, similar to what's used on VAG cars. And there we go, a nice factory looking repair, good for another 20 years. So I've just stripped all this wiring back. This is the ECU end. This is all the stuff that goes inside the cabs. Like I said earlier, these are the wires which go to the clocks and do various things. That's fuel pump. And I've just basically put some cloth tape over this, made it look really pretty again. So yeah, that's a lot better. It was really scabby that end. So that's one bit done. I'm now going to do the continuity check. So I'm just going to do the continuity test. I've started putting the loom on the engine a little bit, just to hold it. Now, I have noticed here, this was cut a little bit, but these two wires have been cut out of the loom. I think there's something to do with the amyl valve, if I'm honest, because I don't think there's a plug for it. Um, they look like being cut years, and it's probably because of the ECU it was running. It didn't need it, I'm not sure, but why it's being cut is a bit odd. But... That's the brown and white wire there, and that's it there. And I have done a test, and it is open circuit, so it ends there. So I'm not sure to be worried by that or not. I'm going to carry on looking. So after looking at this wiring diagram, I find the amyl valve, and then I can follow the wires back to pin 5 and pin 37. So my plan is to now trace them back and make sure that's exactly what they're for. So from using my wiring diagram, I can confirm these are definitely for the amyl valve. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to solder a couple of bits of wire onto these, extend it, and then literally fit bullets on the end, because the amyl valve looks like that, and it just has kind of like bullet connectors. So obviously it's not the proper plug, but it's the nearest we can do. I've got no idea why it's being cut off. I can only assume it's something to do with the way the ECU was mapped. So if you're wondering what an amyl valve is, it's basically an electronic solenoid, which bleeds air off, the turbo wastegate. So basically, the pressure side of the turbo goes to an actuator, which has got a spring in it, which will open at a certain amount and stop the turbo from working. So basically, it bypasses the turbine and stops it from spinning. Now, if you put one of these 
in line, in series, and bleed that pressure away, it will keep the wastegate open for longer and give you more boost pressure. So the ECU basically tells us that boost and overboost whenever it wants to. It's quite a cool little thing, that. Right, so that's the loom repaired and tested, and I'm pretty happy with it now. So I've just thought I'd quickly show you guys exactly how it fits and what goes where, because this could come in handy for some of you. So, starting off down here, that goes through your ball code, all this stuff is inside. So you've got, that's obviously ECU plug. That goes into your ECU, that's for the map sensor. Fuel pump relay, that goes to the fuel pump, as I said earlier. And they go to your clocks normally on a cab or a cleaver. Yeah. So coming into the engine bay, you've got your crank sensor wire in here. That's three pin, amyl valve. That's your airflow meter plug, which is quite obvious. And then it roots round. Four injectors go underneath here. Two earths and another earth. And then you've got intake air temperature sensor there. You've got cold start valve there, and then you've got a four position sensor there. Looks a bit of a rat's nest at the minute, but it won't do. That goes to your battery, like I said earlier. This goes around the front of the engine, this loom here. That plugs into your coolant temperature sensor, and that also plugs into the coolant temperature sensor. Now this one literally just slides on, and that's for your temperature gauge, and this one's for the ECU. Then coming around this side, you've got a plug here, which goes to the fuel tank valve, not really needed on a conversion. Below here, you've got a red plug, which I repaired earlier, which goes to your knock sensor. This three pin plug here, go, well, it's a four pin plug with three wires in it. That goes to the ignition module. That goes to ignition. I think that's a reverse switch, and that's first gear switch. And then that goes to your dizzy. So guys, I hope the wiring and the water pipes make a bit more sense to you, and I hope You've probably learned something from today's video. Um, I've enjoyed making it, so please show your support by hitting that subscribe button, leaving a comment below, and just liking the video. Stay tuned for more, guys, and I'm going to continue doing this secret elect conversion next week. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.